Okay, so let's go on and we'll talk about the next thing that we're gonna do as part of the last bit of MP2. So at this point, I'm working in primarily, so I put, got my ID here, I'm working primarily in this file adplaceactivity.java. And you know, you may feel a little bit intimidated by this given how much code there is in main activity, but you know, rest assured, there's actually a lot less to do in uh, add place activity than there was in the main activity. Um, but what are we doing so far? So the only thing we're doing so far is we're actually loading the layout. Um, so this layout defines what our uh, what this screen is going to look like. And let's go ahead and look at this layout, right? So this is over here in res layout. Remember we did this a little bit um, when we looked at the layout for the um, for the main activity. So this is activity add place. I'm going to open this up. Uh, let me close the emulator and make a little bit extra room. Um, and you'll see this sort of, uh, and I'm going to look at, let's look at the code view. So this defines what's called, a, you know, the top is what's called a linear layout that lays things out in a linear fashion, as the name implies. I've got this edit text. Uh, in, in this, there's a bunch of options here that kind of are needed to set up the text properly so that the text starts in the right spot. Uh, you also see that this is where I define like a default value uh, for the text. Um, and then down here, I've got two buttons at the bottom of the screen that I've defined, and I can see this in the design view. So a save button and a cancel button. Now, what I need from uh, this layout is I need to look at a couple of things. So if I go to the code view, you'll see that I have these IDs that I've defined, and there's three of them here. There's one called description, save button, and cancel button. And these IDs are used to link these components of the layout to the code in my add place activity. So what I'm going to do next, what we're going to work on together is let's get the cancel button to do something. Let's attach a listener to the cancel button. It's actually not required by the test suite, but it's kind of useful because imagine I get to the screen by accident. I want to find a way to get back to the main screen. Um, so I want to attach some behavior to the cancel button. I've got a cancel button on the screen. It looks really nice. It's pretty. It says cancel. Um, but how do I get it to do something? So uh, we did some of this in main activity. We actually didn't work with buttons as much, but, um, but we're going to reuse some of the same ideas. So you'll see here that there's this method that I can use in an Android activity called find view by ID. And what this does is this allows me to find something that's part of the current view by the ID that was defined in the layout. Um, so let's try that. So let's go back here. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this, um, let's see. This is going to be a button, uh, and I think that's the right uh, import. I'll call this cancel button, and I'm going to uh, set that equal to find view by ID, and then r dot. Um, let's see, is it, it's not r dot layout. Let's go back here and check r dot id dot cancel button. Okay. Um, so now what this is doing is it's locating. It's using this piece of information to locate the button in the layout and it's giving me a reference to that button and I'm saving in a variable called cancel button. Um, now, like remember what we did with the search view, now that I have this reference, I can do things with that reference. And one of the things I can do is I can add a listener for the cancel button. Now, we actually have two buttons that are part of this activity. We have a cancel button and a save button. The save button is actually what's going to do the post and create the new favorite place. The cancel button is just going to take us back to the main screen. So it's going to take us back to the map view. Um, now we could, now before what we did is we defined the listener as the current activity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say cancel button dot uh, on, it's called set on click listener. Um, and now here, instead of passing this, right, which I could do, and then I could have the add place activity implement this. The problem is though, I have two buttons, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say new uh, view on click listener. And now you'll see that Android Studio is actually giving me, uh, and it looks here like I don't even have to do this. I'm, oh, okay, cool. Um, so what Android Studio has done, let's do this step at a time. So what Android Studio has done is it's filled in the anonymous object that I need in order to do this. But it's also reminding me of something which is kind of neat. This anonymous object only has one method, which is on click. 
So all this allows me to do, sorry about the dog, she's excited. Um, all this allows me to do is define one method for this particular button that will be called when it's clicked. That's what I want, right? I want to be able to define the behavior of the button when somebody presses it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this with Lambda. And you'll see now I get back this nice Lambda method that all it takes as an argument is a reference to this view. And for now, what we're going to do is let's go back here. Let's grab our log tag, put that in here because this is going to be useful to us. Now I have to be careful because I have to have this the add place activity dot class because I want to use the the tag add place activity. And let's just do this. Let's do log dot d add and I got to import my logging utility add place activity. Um, we'll say cancel button click. Oh sorry, it's tag. Cool. Okay, let's try it. Um, so let's go ahead and, and we'll rerun the app. Oh, it's upset about something here. Oh, it's an unused import. It's not going to kill anything. All right. Uh, so now I'll long press. Uh, and now I'm going to open up my log cat. And I, yeah, these are, these are kind of okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click cancel. Uh, and oh, I don't want to look at main activity. I want to look at add place activity. Uh, and you'll see that um, you'll see that the cancel button was clicked, right? So I hit cancel, cancel, cancel. So now what I know is that this Lambda method, this listener that I set up for my cancel button is working. It's being clicked. Now the question is, how do I get back to the main menu? Um, and here again, we're going to reuse some ideas that we used before. So if you remember, how did we get to this screen in our activity? We created this thing called an intent. Um, and so let's do that. And I'm actually going to put this intent out here outside of the listener. Uh, and that's actually because we're actually going to use this in a couple of places, but this is the first place we're going to use it. So I'm going to say intent back to map. Um, I have to do the imports here. Um, I'll say equals new intent. I pass the context, which is this, and then I'm going to say main activity dot class. So that's a reference to the main activity. So this intent will take us, um, I'll call it back to main, or maybe return to main, to main. And just like I did before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say start activity, and I'll say return to main. So now what am I, what am I expecting to happen? I'm expecting that when I click the back, the cancel button, I should go back to the main activity, the main map view. Okay, let's try this. Well, there's a few things to, I think I'm supposed to clean up here. Oh, these are just like silly little check settlers. Okay, let me go ahead and, and rerun the app. Uh, it loads up and I click here and I hit cancel. Cool. Now, there's only one small change I'm gonna make because watch, watch this. So this is a little bit interesting. So if I hit back, it's actually taking me back to the screen that was causing me to, that was allowing me to enter the, the favorite place. So this is a little strange. This is probably not exactly what the user would expect. They would sort of expect to go back to the map. Um, and if I backed, maybe nothing would happen at that point, right? And the reason is when I go from activity to activity, it's sort of like browsing the web. Android is maintaining the sort of a history of the places that I've been. And so if I go back, I go back to the previous activity. That's not really intuitive here. So we're going to, we're going to fix this. Um, and the way that we're going to do this is, you know, we're going to Google around a little bit and then we're going to, uh, see that we have this method called add flags. Um, and then we're, we're going to add a couple of flags. Uh, what is it called clear? I think here we go. Yes. Flag activity, clear task. Um, so essentially it's going to, this says if this is set, this will cause any existing task that would be associated with this to be cleared before the activity started. So the new activity becomes the root of an otherwise empty task, which is what we want. We essentially want, when we go back, we want this to be the root. We don't want back to take us back to this activity. And it says I also have to use this with flag, flag activity new task. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, these, these are flags. So we're actually going to, this is the first time and the only time in this class we're going to use this bitwise or operator. So look, this isn't required to pass the tests, but it's nice from a usability perspective. So let's just go ahead and do it, put it in there. Um, okay, so now what happens? I long press, I'm back here, I hit cancel, and now if I hit back, 
uh, it goes back to, to here, which is the expected behavior, right? Because I'm at the root of the tree. It doesn't go back to the activity that allows me to add a place. Okay, so this is good. So now I've got, I can go ahead and, I think the app is actually still running, but I'm not gonna figure out how to bring it to the foreground. I'll just go ahead and restart. All right, so at this point, we've got the uh, layout for our new uh, task loading, uh, our new activity loaded, and we're starting to see how to connect the buttons to behaviors that we need to implement. And actually, believe it or not, we are almost done. Um, so what we'll talk about next is what you need to do to finish up this activity and get it to work. And you know, sometimes in software development, this is how it works. We've actually done a lot of work to get to this point. We did work in the server, we did work in the client, right? We've already done work in the main activity to get us here. And so we have a lot of the different pieces of information that we need in order to do the right thing here. And so the last thing we'll talk about next is how to wrap up.